This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be making a sailboat cover for a sunfish sailboat. Also great for a lateen rig. This video will show you every step involved, including patterning and how to make a particular size cover for your particular boat. Even though this is for a sunfish, it's also great for any lateen rig that has a yard and a boom that lays on the deck when the boat is stored. Let's get started and show you how to build one. Here you can see the yard laying on the deck and we've secured a tape measure all the way from the end of the yard all the way to the bow and attached it with pony clamps. We want the end of our cover at the bow to come down around the end of the bow. So we're going to take a measurement here from the end of the bow down approximately 10 inches. We're going to write these measurements down. When our cover is complete, there'll be a sleeve with shock cord running in it. And here at the bow, it'll wrap around the bow slightly. With those measurements in hand for your particular boat, we want to add two and a half inches for shrinkage and a seam that will be used for a pocket at the end of the yard at the transom. Then we want to add two and three quarter inches for a sleeve that will have a shock cord and then obviously the bow flap that we measured at the bow. This will be the fabric length required. To create the shape of our cover, we're going to take measurements approximately every foot. So on paper, we're going to write down the shape of our boat with a measurement at every foot. We'll start here at the end of the yard. This is two and a half inches. And obviously that'll be the same all the way up to the transom. So we're going to take a measurement here at two foot along our tape measure that's uh, down the center of the boat. Sixteen and a half inch. And now we'll go to the three foot section and write that down. You'll notice here the tape measure is just coming down around the rub rail. So right at the bottom edge of the rub rail. Continue measuring all the way down the length of your boat every foot and write those measurements down. For this sunfish, the maximum measurement was 29 inches. Next, we'll be cutting our fabric to size. We'll use those measurements that we calculated to determine the length. We'll be cutting our panels to 201 inches in length. Because our maximum measurement from port to starboard from the midsection was 29 inches, we need to add 2 and 3 quarter inches for the sleeve equaling 31 and 3 quarter inches. We can't use a 60 inch material because it's too small, so we're going to use two panels of a 46 inch width. And we're using some Brella Marine Grade fabric. The panels have been cut to length and now we're using a half inch curtain track to determine the half inch seam allowance. This is where the two panels will be joined together with a half inch seam. Along the transom end, Angela's marking a half inch seam allowance line. This will allow for a pocket to be sewn in for the yard. It's not uncommon when sewing panels together for a little bit of shrinkage to occur, up to one inch per every ten foot. So Angela's adding a one inch allowance to a, possibly accommodate for shrinkage when she sews these two panels together. From that line, Angela's going to start marking on the fabric where she measured on the boat. Her first measurement was two and a half inches. This is at the end of the uh, yard on the uh, stern portion of the boat. Skip one foot and go to two feet and then 16 and a half inches. And notice that Angela is marking or measuring up from the half inch line she drew at the bottom a length of this panel. And then she'll simply continue to use that soapstone pencil to mark on the fabric at every foot location, the same measurements that she took from the boat. Here we are now, we skipped ahead and are close to where the bow section is and she's just placing her final marks on the fabric. Here at the bow end, Angela strikes some lines coming up at the end of the bow cover but those are really not necessary so we're going to skip that, just ignore those. Now with a straight edge, she'll join all those lines together with the soapstone pencil.
Now that our dots have been joined with lines, Angela's is going to go over any kind of line that is rather sharp and rather abrupt, and she's going to smooth it out, basically by making a line in between it that is a little bit more pleasing. This will not affect the cover much. On our sunfish, this is the only area where she's going to join a line to make it a little bit more smoother transition. At the very end, this is the bow end, she's going to strike a line straight across. That's the one inch for extra shrinkage and the two and three quarter inch for the sleeve allowance. Those lines are really not necessary. We need to mark up or add fabric for the shock cord sleeve two and three quarter inches up. So we're going to measure up from that line two and three quarter inches. So we're going to use this OmniGrid ruler here and be sure to mark our line so they're perpendicular to the line we struck down on the fabric. So this mark is two and three quarter inches up from that previous line. It is always important to measure perpendicular to the line that was struck on the fabric. If you do not measure up perpendicular, you'll find your measurements will be off. Using this clear acrylic ruler, we can be sure that we're perpendicular to the line as there are obviously lots of grids on this ruler that can be followed. After you've made all your marks, then simply join the lines together with a straight edge. We're now going to cut on that line we just struck down with a pair of shears. We're not going to use a hot knife because our sleeve will actually have a hem that will be folded under so the raw edge will not be exposed. If you're going to do a single hem, then you may want to consider using a hot knife to seal the edge of the fabric. Because the beam on our boat is rather wide, we have to use two 46 inch width fabric panels to make our blanks. So we're laying this blank that we just cut out on top of another length of fabric. Once it's matched up evenly, we'll simply trace around it, duplicating it exactly as we did the first one. We'll then cut it out with shears. It is always a good idea on both panels to mark the aft portion and the bow portion so you don't get confused about which end is what. Next, we'll lay those two panels on top of each other so that their outer surfaces are facing each other. And then we'll apply the basting tape for canvas down the long edge in the center of these panels to base them together prior to sewing. This helps hold everything in place as we take it to the sewing machine to sew them. Angela will peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then she'll carefully baste them together so their edges are matched up evenly. When basting long panels together, it's important not to stretch either the top side or the bottom side more than the other, so carefully baste them so that you're applying the same pressure to both panels. We're going to use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide and this will be used to determine where the seam should be placed which is a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. And we're using the Sarite 111 sewing machine and sewing a straight stitch around six to seven millimeters in length. This is the preliminary stitch for a semi flat filled seam. Here's an illustration of what a semi flat filled seam looks like. You'll notice that we're not even really using that uh, line that we struck down on the fabric to indicate where the half inch seam would go because this uh, deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide guides us beautifully. We don't really need it. We'll now unfold the panels so that the top side or outside surface is facing up. Angela will scroll the material so that it's easier to feed through the arm of the sewing machine. 
Next, we'll create the top stitch. The top stitch will be placed about an eighth inch away from the fold and we're going to be sure to catch the half inch tail on the underside as we sew this top stitch in place. Again, we're going to show the illustration just to clarify this more clearly. Any time that Angela makes an adjustment to the fabric, you'll notice she buries her needle by hand by rotating the balance wheel, makes the adjustment, and continues to sew. By lowering the needle so that it's deeply buried in the fabric, we don't have to worry about losing the position we just were at. We apologize for all the noise in the background. It's business as usual here at Sailrite, and Jeff was plotting sail kits on the 50-foot plotter bed, and you hear the vacuum table in the background as it sucks the fabric down so the plotter can cut and mark the fabric. Here's what the underside of the semi-flat filled seam looks like. And there we are, those panels are now sewn together. Now that our fabric's cut to size and the two panels are sewn down the middle together, we can lay the fabric on top of the boat and position it so we can mark chafe areas and also where the mast comes through. Using pony clamps is a good idea to hold the fabric in place. Here at the yard end, on the stern portion of the boat, Angela's using a pony clamp to hold the material in place so that she has enough to create a pocket. And here at the bow, she's clamping the material in place. Now she'll measure the size to make sure that the fabric is centered on the boat, and then she'll clamp the sides as well with pony clamps. Once you're happy that the cover is placed on the boat, Accurately and securely, we can now locate chafe areas which need a patch. Mm -hmm. Here you can see Angela feeling for any hardware that may eventually jet through the fabric due to abrasion. So we're going to mark it with an X. We'll do that all around the boat, anywhere there's hardware that is definitely going to be a chafe problem. Sunbrella marine grade fabric is one of the best fabrics for UV resistance, water resistance, and stain resistance, but its downfall is abrasion. So in any areas that are going to be possible abrasion areas, you need to put extra material underneath to help prevent it from abrading through. If you use a vinyl fabric, that's really not the case. A vinyl fabric is more abrasion resistant. However, it's still important to put abrasion patches down to prolong the life of any cover, including vinyl products. This sunfish sailboat has a molded splash guard, and Angela is marking where that molded splash guard is underneath the cover so that she can provide shape protection for that as well. As she lifts the fabric, you can see the splash guard underneath, just slightly. And here at this location is the end of the uh, yard, and we're going to provide some protection there as well, for that's typically where they will rest on the boat. So she's going to mark that location as well. On a scrap piece of paper, she's going to sketch out where each one of these shape protection patches should go and also write down the size of what she wants. Here's a future look at the aft portion of our boat where the yard goes through a pocket that we will be creating. Now's the time to mark and measure what the pocket should be for our boat. Angela's feeling the corner of the transom and she's going to stop it there so that's 18 inches. She'll write that down on the paper. Then at the center location we have a little bit of hardware that may get in the way. So at the center location we're going to make this pocket a little bit smaller around 16 inches, but let's look underneath to make sure that's small enough. Because this hardware is here, so in front of that, right here. So yes, 16 inches is about perfect, so we're going to mark that down on our paper. Yeah. 
Next, we're going to mark the location of the mast. So we're going to move the pony clamps towards the uh, bow section and move them back approximately where the uh, mast uh, is positioned on the port and starboard side. Then we can roll the fabric back and determine where the hole is for the mast. Angela has placed a yardstick in the uh, mast hole and she's going to place an X on the underside of the fabric to determine where the mast will come through the cover. Now at the loft table we can use a straight pin and poke through any one of those X's to transfer the X to the underside of the cover or the top side of the cover. Here's an abrasion patch and that patch was marked on the uh, top side of the fabric, the outside surface, so we're transferring it here to the bottom side of the surface because that's where the patch will be placed. We'll do that for each location what we've marked on the fabric where they need to be transferred to the bottom side or the top side, let's say, for instance, for the mast. We're going to use a compass and draw a circle where the mass will exit from the cover. We're going to measure over two and a half inches to create a five inch diameter circle on our cover. Using a T-square, we're going to mark a line directly down from the center of that circle all the way to the edge of the fabric on the side that we want the zipper plaque to be installed for the mast boot collar. We use the soapstone pencil there to mark the fabric. We're going to mark up six inches from the center seam line and that's where our collar panel will start. So we'll take a measurement from that mark six inches up all the way down to the edge. From that location, we'll measure all the way down to the edge of the fabric, which is 34 and a quarter inches. We'll be making a collar that will be sewn in at that location, which is 16 inches wide and a little bit longer than our uh, 34 and a quarter inch measurement. She's going to make it at least 35 or 36 inches. Using some of the excess fabric that was left over from cutting our two panels out, we're going to measure a collar panel that is that size, around 36 by 16 inches, using the soapstone pencil. Then we're going to use the Cerite Edge Hot Knife and cut it out. Using a hot knife on Sunbrella fabric helps to prevent the Sunbrella fabric from unraveling. Angela is also marking around the sides a half inch in with the soapstone pencil. Now this will be used much later on in the video when we sew this panel into the main cover. So she did that on both the long sides and the top side, half inch line from the cut edge. And she used the Sarite Edge Hot Knife to cut it out. Okay, I'm going to find the center for my circle. So we're going to fold this in half. This is also the line we're going to cut the whole thing onto. There's the center. And it's six inches from the top to the center of my circle, but with my half inch allowance, I'm going to make it six and a half, which would also be the same as six from here. And that's my center. It's a five inch circle. I'm going to actually make two lines for my, I'm making two circles, but my first one, I'm making two and a half inches for the real size. Okay, but I want my half inch. Now Angela is setting her compass to two inches so she can make a line on the inside of that circle that she just created a half inch away. We'll cut with the Sarite Edge Hot Knife around that circle on the inside yeah, line, in not the outside line. Even though it's not the five inches. On the bottom side of our work surface to help prevent damage to the tabletop, we're cutting on top of a ruler, a metal ruler. You could also cut on top of glass, which will help prevent damage to the tabletop. 
She made marks all around the uh, circumference of the circle and will use those as a guide to make relief marks. There's no incorrect spacing for relief marks. They just need to be positioned approximately an inch or an inch and a half or even smaller apart from each other. The more relief notches, the easier it is to sew on the uh, collar or the boot which is coming up. Now we're marking a line directly down from that and we'll use that hot Sayerite edge hot knife to split that line open all the way to the circle of edge. As we measure this circle again, we notice that it's about five and a quarter inches. So let's multiply that times pi, which is 3.14. We're going to use some scraps umbrella fabric and make a boot that is 16 and a half inches. That's uh, rounded up, obviously, by nine inches. And the nine inches will be the height of the boot. Divided by two, it'll be around 4.5 inches in height when complete. So here's our rectangle and we're going to cut it out with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife using the ruler on the bottom side to prevent damage to the tabletop. Now we're going to take that boot and apply double-sided tape to the short edges of the boot. This is the uh, nine inch edge and create a half inch hem on both sides of the boot. Do not go more than a half inch. That half inch will be accommodated when we make the zipper plaque too, so don't worry about your circumference measurement being off. It is taken away when we install the zipper. That's coming up later on. Now we'll fold this in half along its long side and create a crease. We'll take it to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch down the hemmed edges. These are the short edges that are approximately four and a half inches in height now. Reverse the beginning as we did and here at the end as well. Do that to the other end as well. We'll now take an eighth inch uh, size Dacron leech line and sew it so that it's uh, long enough to tie around the mast. So the length of this leech line is approximately 36 inches. We'll fold the boot in half to find the center and then sew it approximately an inch from the top. I think if I had my preference, I'd sew it a couple inches down from the top as I'd rather tie it down lower than I would up here near the edge of the boot. That is totally up to you, it's preference. We're gonna just sew a few straight stitches, reversing a few times just to secure the Dacron leech line in place. Uh, the actual tying is what will keep it here. This is just to keep from losing the uh, leech line. Now where we made the slit for the uh, zipper, we'll install double-sided tape to it so we can create a half-inch hem on the underside. And now we'll create a half-inch hem. We'll do that to this side and also the opposite side. This will make up for the fact that we took a half-inch away from our boot collar on both sides. So the hems are created. Now we're going to take our boot collar and be sure to start it right against the edge of uh, that opening around the circle and we'll reverse here at the beginning to lock our stitch in place. And Angela's also using that deluxe magnet there to keep the stitch approximately a half inch from the raw edge. And you can see as she sews the collar onto the circle that she's being careful to line up the raw edges of the fabric. If you've never sewn a collar or a boot onto a circle, take your time. The slower you go, the more beautiful the results. Because we sewed leech line on, you'll notice the leech line is facing down towards the outside surface of this collar panel. The panel's hems, where the zipper will be installed later, are facing down against the table top. All right, continue sewing this on. We are going to show this entire process here in its entirety because sometimes customers have uh, struggles sewing on uh, at boots and collars on circles. So we want to show the whole thing so you get the idea how it's done. And if we've done our calculations accurately, it should come out fairly even. It's not a bad idea to sometimes not create the hem on the last side just in case you did not make your calculations correctly or for some reason it just doesn't sew on correctly. So if you have problems, in other words, if the uh, collar 
and the boot don't match up the opening, you could leave one side unfinished until you get close to coming to the end, then create your hem, and then sew it onto the end. That way you could modify it if it's too long or too short. In our situation, it came out pretty well using the calculations we used earlier. If you look closely, it's not exactly on, but it's close enough to allow for the zipper to be sewn in place. Okay, we have the line drawn on the underside of the fabric. We're going to take scissors and cut all the way to the center seam. Do not cut any further than that. reason we're slitting it here is so that we can roll the cover over so the top side is facing up instead of this, this the bottom side. So now the top side's facing up, and because we made a slit, we know exactly where that line rests. Now we can take our collar panel with the boot sewn onto it and place it over the slit so that we know it's positioned exactly right and now we'll mark its location with the soapstone pencil. Angela's going to center that uh, line that we just slit in the cover of fabric so that it's in between the uh, collar panel with a half inch on each side of the line because we created a half inch hem. Once she's happy with the placement of the collar panel, she'll mark the edges so they can be trimmed to size using that soapstone pencil. She'll mark them so that they are even with the edge of the cover underneath. She'll trim off this edge with scissors. We are going to be creating a sleeve for shock cord and that sleeve will accommodate a half inch fold here so the raw edge will be concealed. Angela's now transferring that mark we placed two and three quarter inches up from the edge to the collar panel and then transferring the mark to the top side of the collar panel as well so that she can determine where the zipper should stop. Do not want the zipper to go down into the sleeve portion that will be created in a later step. So here's where the zipper should stop. We're going to be using a YKK number 10 Vislon zipper here and we're placing a quarter inch basting tape for canvas along the edge of the zipper flange as far away from the teeth as possible to keep the glue away from the teeth. And we'll do that on both sides of the zipper. The zipper must separate all the way, so we must use a finish zipper or sometimes referred to a jacket style zipper. We peeled off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and the starter will be placed just about a quarter inch away from that mark or a half inch away from the mark. This collar panel calls for us not to cover the teeth with the uh, umbrella fabric. The teeth will be left exposed. That's the way we designed this collar panel. It makes it easier for quick zipping because there's no fabric in the way. However, the teeth will be left exposed to the sun, which is not as good in that situation. If you want to make a covering for the teeth, you can do so. Here as we get to the boot portion, you notice the boot's not exactly flush, so we're uh, making up for that fact that the boot is a little bit short, but it still has enough area for sewing, so we're okay. Let's get that sewed down before we concentrate on the other side so nothing moves. We'll start here at the uh, starter box and we'll do a little bit of reversing and sew up the entire length of the zipper securing it to the cover. Here we are coming up to the boot that we sewed onto the collar panel and the boot's not uh, running along the same line so Angela's going to make a deviation so that she can still catch the boot. Watch what she does here. Uh-oh, I think we forgot to add a stopper here. Angela's going to have to rip out some stitches. She realizes it now. Oh, shoot. Even if you've been sewing for years, it's not uncommon to forget something. She's going to take some of that scrap umbrella fabric and use the hot knife to cut it so that she can create a stopper for the ends of the zipper. Obviously, we need two uh, because you need one for both sides of the zipper. Now she's going to apply some double-sided tape onto that canvas she just created and then she'll stick it over the teeth. Obviously since we sewed one side we need to rip some stitches. Oh here's a perfect opportunity to show you how to use a seam ripper. Hopefully you know how to do that already. <laughs> needs to be cut after pulling this down because they're a pain to get on there. 
Angela moved the slider down so she can cut the teeth and not have to reinstall the slider. Though if you forget to do that, it's not that hard to reinstall the slider. It's just more of a pain. That's what she was talking about earlier. She's going to use the hot knife to cut the zipper. And notice that she has the zipper down about an eighth inch away from the edge of the fabric. It's not hanging over the edge. There are other ways to install a stop. You could actually take a couple teeth out and melt the teeth in. So if you do make this mistake, you don't have to use a piece of fabric. You could take two of the extra teeth out of the other one, sink them in, and then melt them with the hot knife. Or you could fold the zipper back and sew it down. There are multiple ways to create a stop. But this is a nice way, and it really looks nice. Once the stop is in place, we can take it back over to the sewing machine and sew the end of the zipper down as it had been before. We're not going to show that. Now that one side is secured down, we can concentrate on the other one. The procedure is exactly the same. She's going to baste it in place and then she'll sew that down as well. However, before she takes it to the sewing machine and sews it, she is going to separate the zipper. Oh yeah, and we're going to put the stop on first before we sew the zipper down in this situation. Here we're coming up to the uh, boot portion and we'll sew that and move on. The zipper is now secured and works great. Okay, I don't know if you have this in your arsenal, but this is some 30 gauge plastic pane uh, or vinyl window material and we're cutting circles out of it and we're going to use it to reinforce a grommet. So we're going to cut two of these and we're going to apply double-sided tape to it. If you don't have this vinyl window material, you can use a, uh, a different type of vinyl or some sort of tough material to reinforce it. Or even you can use a couple uh, uh, patches of umbrella to reinforce it as well. Here we're marking the edge at two and three-quarter inches so we know where that fold will rest once it's created in a later step. And we're going to position those circles uh, in a spot we think that will be helpful to secure the cover via shock cord because shock cord is going to come out from the middle of these uh, circles. She's going to place it up approximately an inch up from the edge uh, and approximately two inches away from the folded edge of the umbrella. She'll base the circle on the underside of the fabric so that it will not be seen. It'll be inside of our pocket, in the middle of our sleeve. Now, she's going to cut a hole. She's going to do it from the top side. I would not do this. I'd flip the fabric around so that I could ensure that I'm putting the hole in the center of my uh, reinforced area. Because it's a little bit off when she's done. Um, now she's going to use number one spur grommets. The spur grommet has teeth and she's going to use a number one spur grommet die set. And she's going to press the male portion into the fabric and then place the female portion on top. The female portion has the teeth. Place the anvil on the bottom side and then use a mallet and give it a few blows to set the spur grommet into the canvas. Here's a look ahead of what this will look like when we're done. You'll notice this is a shock cord and it comes through those number one spur grommets and clips together to tension the side of the boat and it obviously separates there so that you can install the cover around the mast. We'll show putting in the other side in double time. And here on the underside, you'll notice they're not centered. That's because I would have put them in from the other side, but they'll still work great. Now we'll position the fabric. So we're working on the top side or the outside surface. Position the collar panel over top of it and mark 
its location at the corners with the soapstone pencil. So she's making sure everything is in its appropriate spot. Once she's happy, then she's going to use that soapstone pencil and mark each one of the corners so that she can draw a straight line to indicate where this panel should be sewn down. Using a straight edge, she'll join the marks. Then she's going to measure over one inch away from the lines and strike another line one inch on the inside of each one of these lines she's striking down now. So here she is marking one inch over and she'll do that on all three of the lines. This will be our cut line. We'll use the Sayerite Edge hot knife and we'll cut it out on the inside line all around the perimeter. Yeah, it's actually the, the half inch is universal anyway. We'll be creating a half inch hem. So we're going to make miter cuts that are going in approximately a half inch to the in it at the corners. So on this corner and also on this corner. That will enable us to create a half inch hem on the top side and the sides of this rectangular opening. We're now working from the underside of the cover fabric and we're going to apply double sided tape around the perimeter, peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue and we'll create our half inch hem so it's folded on the underside of the cover. Because we created a miter cut at the corner, we can easily fold this over at each one of the corners. That's why we created that half inch miter. Once all three sides are basted down, we'll now apply double sided tape on top of that half inch hem. This will be used to hold the collar panel in place. We'll flip the fabric so we're working on the outside surface. The outside surface is facing up. We'll place the collar panel or get the collar panel ready by placing a half inch hem all around the perimeter on the two outside edges and the top edge using this half inch curtain track. You can use anything that's a half inch. We did this earlier but the marks either came off or either we got them on the wrong side so we're reapplying them now. Now we can use those marks as a reference of how this panel should rest in our rectangular cutout with the half inch hem. So we're lining it up so the half inch hem fold is directly on top of those marks we just placed on the collar panel. Once you're happy with its placement we can scroll up the fabric. Angela's scrolling it up here from the bow and she's also scrolled the stern as well Notice how it's a nice, neat package. This is how you would sew anything with any substance or size. We already sewed down the one side. We didn't show that, and here we are sewing at the top. We just want to sew around the perimeter, securing the collar panel inside the cover. When Angela gets to a corner, you'll notice that she will uh, bury her needle and lift her foot and pivot on the needle. Watch this when she gets to the corner. There she lowered the needle just so she can adjust the fabric. Anytime she adjusts the fabric, she makes sure the needle is buried in the material so she doesn't lose her position. Here we come to the corner. She will bury the needle. She'll pivot on the needle by lifting the foot and rolling the fabric around. I don't even think she lifted the foot but uh, she did roll it around with the needle buried so she didn't lose her position and then she'll just sew down the opposite side. When you get to the bottom be sure to reverse to lock your stitch in place. That's all there is to it. It's now time to create the shape protection patches. Go back to your paper that you made 
indicating what size patches you need, and using some of that scrap fabric that's left over, you can uh, trace out the, each one of the patches and use a hot knife to cut them out. We are not going to be hemming the edges under, so it's a good idea to use a hot knife. We're going to apply basting tape to each one of the sizes of patches, and we'll baste them in position over top of the marks that we made on the underside of the cover. We're going to position these patches so they're going to look pleasing to the eye, so notice that Angela is positioning it so that it is parallel to the edge of the cover. At the stern or transom, we're going to have a pocket that it, it will uh, hold the uh, yard and we're going to create some reinforcing patches there as well, though we did not mark that on our paper. It's a good idea to have a reinforcing uh, layer on the top side of the cover and also the pocket that we'll be creating later on. So we're just kind of guessing at what size uh, pocket reinforcing patch we want to place on the cover and uh, marking it on some scrap fabric and tracing around the perimeter of this the stern portion of the cover. We'll also be basting this in place as well. Edge is now going to concentrate on making shape protection patches for the splash guard on our sunfish sailboat. So she's marking on the underside of the fabric where that uh, reinforcing patch will be placed. So drawing lines on the fabric, then she's going to cut out some scrap fabric to be placed right on top of these lines. These lines are used for reference only. Now she's measuring each one of the lines to determine how long to cut each one of these patch reinforcing areas. Here at the edge, there's no reason to really go into the sleeve area, so she's going to cut it short right on that 2 and 3 eighths inch line. Now she'll baste it in place. Now that all the patches are placed on the underside of the cover, we can just simply take it to the sewing machine and sew down each one of the edges, securing each patch in position. Here as she gets to the corner, she leaves her needle buried and pivots the fabric around and scrolls the material neatly underneath the arm of the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. And sews down the other side. We're going to show the rest of this in double time and we're not going to show all of it, but basically we're just sewing each one of these reinforcing patches or shape protection patches down. Next, we're going to sew the uh, pocket that will accommodate the yard at the transom. We were using scrap fabric and placing the stern portion of the cover on top of it so that we can trace around it again to create this pocket. 
refer back to your paper that has the measurements for that pocket. Ours is 18 inches on the side and 16 inches on the center, so Angela's going to mark the 18 inches right on the cover fabric, and she's going to mark uh, that on the other side as well. Then she's going to mark the 16 inch location in the center, then she'll join those lines together. Notice that she's marking on the two and three quarter inch line that will be used for the sleeve. Uh, that's where she's going to start her measurements from. 16 inches in there. Now she'll join those lines with a sort of V. Now she can trace around the cover that's been placed on top of that scrap fabric. She's going to trace around down to that 18 inch mark, but she's also going to go two and three quarter inch away from the 18 inch mark uh, down below that because she will have to incorporate for the shock cord sleeve in this the pocket in a later step. So here she's marking uh, two and three quarter inches away from that 18 inch mark and here's where the 18 inch mark will stop. Do that on both sides. Now she's going to measure it down 16 inches from the top, place a mark there, and then create lines to that location. And then she'll create a line 2 and 3 quarter inches away from this line for the sleeve allowance that will be used in this the pocket. This sleeve will actually be smaller than two and three quarter inch in a later step, but we still want to mark it two and three quarters just as we did with the other cover. Now we'll simply cut it out with scissors. We're going to reinforce the very end of this underside pocket with some scrap fabric as well because this is where the end of the yard will be resting. So we've just cut a patch, uh, doesn't really matter the size, just enough to obviously protect the end of the cover from abrasion. We're using a hot knife on this edge because this edge will not be hemmed, it'll be left raw. Before we do anything, we want to sew that reinforcing shape patch uh, to the end of the pocket. So we'll sew it at the short end and we'll also sew it on the long end, which we used a hot knife uh, to seal the edge of the fabric. With that pocket shape protection facing the tabletop, in other words, so that the outside surface is facing up, and with the cover, facing so the inside surface is facing up, we'll join those two panels together. And we're going to use a stapler here instead of double-sided tape to staple it in position. So the cover is facing a wrong side up and the pocket with its shape protection patch is facing right side up and wrong side down. And uh, it it's obviously a little bit confusing here but it will work out in the end. I think a simpler way of saying it is that the outside surfaces are facing each other. Now Angela's striking the line that is two and three quarter inches from the edge of the fabric. Uh, this will be that uh, sleeve for the shock cord. Then she'll extend that 18 inch line through the two and three quarter inch area and she'll do the exact same thing to the other side. This is the line she will sew on top of. Now we'll take it over to the sewing machine and sew directly on top of that line. Reversing at the beginning, which we didn't show, and also at the end.
It's important to sew all around here, so don't forget to sew the very stern end as well. So she's going to pivot on the needle, lift the foot, lower the foot, and continue to sew. Bury the needle, roll the fabric around, and continue to sew. Once it's sewn in place, Angela's going to use a hot knife here and she's going to cut approximately a half inch away from the stitch line she just created to cut out this section. You could use scissors as well. Uh, this edge doesn't necessarily have to be heat sealed, but heat sealing this umbrella is always a good idea to keep it from unraveling. There are multiple thicknesses of fabric here, so she's going to have to go a little bit slow with the Sayerite Edge hot knife so she cuts through all four layers at once. We didn't talk much about the thread we're using. We're using a Tanara thread, and you'll notice the thread did not cut well with the hot knife. That's because Tanara thread is almost totally impervious to the UV, so even with this extremely hot hot knife, Notice the Tanara thread is what's so stubborn. It takes a lot of heat to cut the Tanara thread. Tanara thread will not rot and it's very chemical resistant. You could use a polyester V69 thread as well. The polyester V69 thread is a lot less expensive, but Tanara thread can be a little tricky to sew with. This is how we're gonna go from this edge to this edge. Since there are four layers of fabric, it's pretty stiff, so it's kind of difficult to turn it right side out. But uh, just take your time and uh, keep working the fabric until it is turned right side out and the areas that we sewed are resting flat. Use your hand here and push the corners out. We are done with the pocket. Now, our next step will be the, uh, sewing the shock cord sleeve in place. At the edges of that pocket we just created, we want to make some miter slits. Uh, this will make it easier for us to create the sleeve. Don't cut into the uh, actual stitch, just keep it about an eighth inch away from the stitch line. Then fold this, uh, this little flap over and that's where we'll start our stitching. We're going to use the uh, stapler here again, though this one didn't go in well, to secure everything in place. You could use straight pins as well. Double-sided tape will not hold exceptionally well here um, because there's a lot of fabric and it is having to make quite a bit of twists and turns. Once that's uh, stapled or uh, pinned in place, we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew up the leg. We will stop sewing here at the junction where it takes a turn and reverse to lock the stitch in place. We'll do that to the other side as well. Don't forget to take out any staples that are still left in your project. You do not want to leave those in. We did not show sewing the other side, but here it is complete. So now we're going to use the double-sided tape and place it all around the perimeter of our cover on the underside of the cover. Here we are applying the double-sided tape to that transom pocket and we're going to go around the perimeter of that as well because that sleeve will actually be incorporated into the pocket edge. Now we're going to create a half inch hem all around the perimeter. We'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue of the double sided tape and create that half inch hem. You can use a flat object like a putty knife if the basting tape doesn't seem to hold and just depress it over the part that's basted and it'll hold much better. 
If you want a little bit of a shortcut, you could just use a hot knife around the entire perimeter of the cover and just create a single fold for the uh, sleeve. We're creating a half inch uh, hem and then we'll create the fold which gives a more finished look but there's obviously more labor involved. We're going to insert our shock cord before we create the uh, fold that will incorporate it. So this is a quarter inch shock cord bungee and we've tied a knot through the grommet. And now we're applying double sided tape on top of our half inch fold and we'll use that to create the uh, sleeve. The length of shock cord that will be required because of the way we're installing it needs to be the entire length of the perimeter all around the cover, which is a shame in a way because we have to pull out a lot of, or at least a quarter of the length, or approximately a quarter of the length when we're done. So a lot of the shock cord will be uh, used as waste, but it's much easier to install the shock cord now rather than just installing a line and then having to run the shock cord through. Uh, we find that it's better to throw away a little bit of shock cord than it is to spend the time to pull the shock cord through with, say, a, um, a, a rope or a twine. Though it can be done that way. Can you show that on that one? Yeah. This one lays over my zipper. So I want to fold it. So it's away from my teeth and in line with the zipper. You may notice that she's matching up to a line. Uh, that's because she struck a line down there uh, earlier. Didn't we didn't show that uh, so that she knew exactly edges. where to fold the edge of the fabric to. Now she's going to talk just, about the uh, bow section I here. I went up to this corner here and now I went to this corner here. And then I took the middle in and then worked out what I needed to fold. And I can still catch quite a good chunk of it. All right, here we are at the transom talking about the sleeve for the pocket. The hem here at the pocket will be a little bit narrower because there's a little bit of shape built into this. And the larger the hem, the more difficult called it is to keep it nice and flat. So notice here that she is creating approximately a one inch hem or sleeve for the shock cord. And she's going to use a stapler here. This stapler is a high rise stapler so it actually can staple over a rope like this. If you don't have a stapler like this, you could use the double side tape, but it doesn't stick exceptionally well because of so much shape in here, or you can use T-pins, uh, which she will show in a later step here. To try and get as smooth as possible. You gonna see it again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it already popped moving it. And there is an excess of fabric here. Where I just put a very small feet to take that up on that side. If your cover has a lot of shape in it, you may need to make pleats in the uh, hem that you create here. As long as the pleats are on the underside, it won't look bad uh, from the top side. And here she's going to use a straight pin uh, to show you how to use pins instead of staples because this will work just as well. All right, we're done. It's secured all around the perimeter. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew it in place. We'll sew approximately an eighth inch away from the edge of the fold, all around the entire perimeter, reversing obviously here at the beginning, and we'll sew all around. We've skipped ahead to the uh, stern portion where that pocket is and we'll show you how Angela sews that in. 
you do have to make sure that you move the fabric around so you're only sewing the pocket and not the actual cover. But as long as you're careful not to sew into the cover, it's pretty easy. All right, we're gonna skip the remainder and show you what it looks like when it's done. Here's the uh, bow section. And you can see the rest of the cover here, all the way to the stern. We're gonna be installing the shock cord hook self-locking onto the sh one end of the shock cord. First we installed the sleeve, then we install the hook, and then we push the sleeve over the two locking fingers. You may not wanna do this yet because when we install the cover on the boat, we'll have to actually take this off and adjust the length of shock cord. So you may wanna hold off on this. To install belly straps or webbing ties, we need to take a few measurements. So we're going to use this tape measure and determine how long to cut the webbing. We're going to cut it a little bit too long actually in the end, um, but uh, we need to get a preliminary measurement here. And we're going to install a couple belly straps and we're also going to be using a webbing tie at the transom to hold the yards in the cover. We're going to cut some webbing to approximately six inches in size and this will be used to hold the female Porsche portion of the side release buckle. So we're going to make a six inch strip of webbing for each location that we want a belly strap and we're going to take it to the sewing machine and just preliminarily sew it in place. Uh, she's actually going to sew it pretty heavily here. Uh, you can actually just uh, take it straight to the cover and sew it right on the cover securing the webbing to itself and also the cover at the same time. Uh, however, Angela always seems to create a box stitch with a Z and now she'll take it over to the cover and position it where she wants it. There is no hard fast rule of where to position each one of these belly straps. Uh, you just want the, uh, the buckle to be against the edge of the cover and she's using the soapstone pencil to indicate where she wants to sew it onto the cover. Be sure you do not sew the shock cord in place when you sew this buckle on. And then she's going to sew a straight stitch, reversing several times, and move over approximately a quarter to a half inch or an inch away and sew another straight stitch, securing it onto the inside of the cover. So the webbing is on the inside of the cover. She's now using a straight edge to determine where it should uh, be placed on the opposite end of the cover, opposite side I should say, not end. And she's going to cut a length of webbing, the appropriate length uh, for that location on the boat. She'll then insert the male portion of the side release buckle through the webbing as shown here. And then she's going to sew uh, the end of the webbing. First she'll create a double fold and just a straight stitch down the center. This little double fold on the end of the webbing will keep the male portion of the buckle from detaching from the end of the webbing. So it's basically a stop. Now we'll sew it on the opposite side of the cover at the appropriate location on the inside. So she's marking the inside surface so she knows where to install it and she's going to make sure that the buckle is facing the right direction when she sews it onto the cover. Alright, I apologize for all the noise in the background. Jeff Frank is plotting sails and the vacuum table is on that helps to hold the fabric down to the vacuum table so that the plotter can cut each panel and mark the panels. It's business as usual here at Sailrite. All right, we're only going to show installing one belly strap, though I think we used three for the entire cover. Now we're going to create a webbing tie at the transom. She's finding the center location, and she's just uh, cut a determined uh, a length of webbing that's approximately uh, five foot in length 
and she's going to sew it onto the top portion of the cover right where the pocket end is. So this will be used to tie the pocket over the yard. We are almost done. Next step, fitting the cover over the boat. All that's left now is to fit the cover over the boat and adjust the shock cord in the sleeve. Here's how it works over the end at the transom. And we need to unzip the zipper so that we can fit it around the mast. And we'll zip the zipper right back up, all the way up the boot. Uh-oh, we have that webbing running through the boot. We need to pull it out. And finish zipping the zipper all the way up. And it stops at the stops. Looks good. We'll tie the leech line around the mast which will help to keep the weather out. Now we'll pull out some of this excess shock cord. As I discussed earlier, we have too much shock cord in the uh, sleeve. You definitely need a second helper to help with this. Uh, and you have to kind of finagle it until it's basically pulled fairly taut around the entire circumference of the cover. So we're only pulling one end. And we installed the hook on the other end. What we find it's, is, is that it's better to pull it out from not just one end, but both ends. So Angela is now uh, pulling the opposite side of the shock cord, the side that has the hook installed. So we'll have to remove the hook, which is not difficult to do. And then she'll create some knots uh, at the approximate location, or a single knot, I should say, to tie them both together to see how it fits uh, with this amount of shock cord pulling out. We're pulling out approximately a quarter to almost half of the amount of shock cord. Uh, you just want a nice snug fit. And you can always make adjustments. Even if you install those uh, self-locking uh, clips on the end, they can be removed and you can cut more shock cord if your cover is not tight enough. Beautiful cover. Beautiful. Now at the bow, we have not uh, placed that fabric underneath the lift. That's one of the reasons that we left a fairly long piece at the bow, uh, because it just uh, helps to secure the cover as it rests up against uh, the uh, transport dolly. We're going to pull a little bit more of the shock cord out here, and then we'll tie knots once we're happy and then we'll install those hooks that we uh, installed earlier to one side. Now Angela likes to use masking tape to keep the uh, shock cord intact so she can install the hooks. Uh, so she's going to actually install a single run of masking tape, cut it, and then she's going to cut in the center of the masking tape. And uh, she thinks that the hooks go on easier this way, and she may be right. It keeps them from unraveling. She'll install the uh, sleeve, and then push the hook over the tape, and push it all the way up so that the shock cord's resting against the end, and then push the sleeve over the locking mechanism, and there it is. There it is installed. Now she'll remove the knot that she placed in it earlier. We will not show installing the hook to the opposite side, but here it is complete. That allows us to unzip the cover and to remove both panels so it can go around the mast. Now we'll attach the belly straps. The amount of webbing here looks appropriate. However, on the one at the uh, 
bow section, there is way too much webbing. We miscalculated someplace. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it, there's too much webbing, so what you should really should do is go back to the sewing machine and uh, cut it down and put that stop on the end because uh, you don't really want this much webbing hanging. And we also used a belly strap here near the transom as well. This cover will not easily fall off. Here at the transom we have that pocket that contains the yard and the boom and that webbing strap that is used to securely hold the cover over the yard and boom. Alright, and that's how the uh, bow cover fits over the top. Nice and snug. And Angela's going to check to make sure that she has reinforcing patches everywhere the, there is an object that may cause abrasion. There's a patch there. Here's where that splash guard is. There's a patch there to protect any kind of abrasion that may happen. And there's also a patch near the transom where the traveler is. Now we'll discuss some of the materials that were used to make this cover. Let's now take a look at the materials list that was used to make this sunfish boat cover. Here's the list of materials that was used. You may want to pause the video so you can study this. To see the actual amount of materials that was used, we're going to show it in green here. So this will show you exactly how much material we used to make this cover for the sunfish. And now here's a display of the tools that were used to make this cover. If you have questions, don't hesitate to call Sayerite and be sure to subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today for more videos like this. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.